Welcome to the Home Ownership Podcast presented by Momentum Realty, located in Hanover, Massachusetts. This series covers all things real estate and the best practices for buying, selling, and owning properties. Now here's your host, Sean Maloney. Welcome to episode 178, deciding whether to accept an offer or not. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me today. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject that as we start to hinge the marketplace, as interest rates climb, as inventory climbs, as the word seller market slowly but surely starts to erode, I want to talk about that all important subject of whether or not to accept an offer when you get one. People oftentimes look at the offers and they get greedy. They say, you know, I want more than that. And then they start making up excuses like, oh, it's because it was 4th of July weekend. Oh, it's because it was voting this week. Now, one week is not a whole view of a market, nor is two weeks, really. But the truth is to get those over asking amazing offers, typically you're talking within the first seven to 14 days. But honestly, after about five to six days, depending on what market you're in lately, that already seemed like it was waning off. So now we're sitting here with a lot of people who after the first week are like, oh, should I accept that offer or should I not? And it's like, well, you better be careful, right? Because you never know. So keep in mind, well, it's important to understand all the terms in every offer and it's important to demand the most for your home. Turning down a good offer at the start could lead to a lesser offer in the future, which really could stink, like to know that you could have taken that money, especially when it really is salt in the wound is when the same person gets it, that same buyer, because they were patient and they get it by waiting. Because as a seller, it's like, oh my God, I could have got $20,000 more from this exact same transaction and been done two weeks ago if I had just listened to good advice. But also remember when looking at offers, accepting the wrong one can bring in challenges, right? Different contingencies and things like that can mean different things. Home sale contingencies, mortgage contingencies, we have home inspection contingencies, lead paint contingencies, have all these different contingencies, which means this has to happen for that to happen, which means the buyer can walk away with their deposit unless everything goes the way that they seem to think is smooth and fit for themselves, especially if we use the words satisfactory results in any of the contingencies with the inspections, because that means if it doesn't come out the way they like it, they get to leave. There's no dollar amount. There's no fixed cost. There's no, okay, I have them on the hook. It's if they don't like the way the inspection goes, they get to walk away with their thing. So being a seller is really confusing place, right? We have the news telling us mortgage rates. We have the mortgage professionals telling us, oh, you better watch out for this, that. We have the agents. We have the attorneys. We have our family members. We have so many people. But the truth is the person you really should listen to is your own real estate agent. You hired them for a reason. You should really try to trust them as a fiduciary for you, but understand that it ultimately needs to work best for you, the client. And if time is of the essence, you really always want to be careful because not to say that a better offer isn't around the corner and I don't want to give the people advice to sell their house up from underneath themselves. But the truth is, typically speaking, within that first week or two, you have a very good pulse in a hot market of what people are going to be willing to offer you. Now, again, as they add in those contingencies, does price and contingencies change things? Of course, because we all worry about list price the most, but say a home sale contingency, what happens if you get involved with that individual and then they don't end up being able to sell their home so therefore they can retract their deposit because of that issue? That's a real issue, right? Or the other option is they do sell it. So as a seller, you're going to do a little bit of math. You're going to do a little bit of investigation. What is the house like that they're trying to sell? What is it that you can do to help them sell it? Is it a good price that they're going to be putting it on for? Has that home sold recently and how does it sell then? You look at all these contributing factors to understand whether you should accept a home sale contingency or not. But that said, don't be afraid of home sale contingencies, especially in the upper echelon of the market. Like once you pass by 500,000 or you get into second and third time home buyers, they typically tend to have a home to sell. They live somewhere and they need to free up their finances from the existing one in order to buy the next one. And most of the people are highly motivated when they have these home sale contingencies because they're trying to ladder their way up or ladder their way down the marketplace. A lot of times people get into homes and they decide, okay, that this isn't going to be big enough. I have some children coming, so I'm going to make a bigger home. So I'm going to sell this one and move to another one. Other times in life, people say, well, I just had this go on and that go on. And 
all this space we have, we're not utilizing, we're paying huge bills, so why don't we downsize? So we see this all the time, but one of the things that has to happen, it's like a chicken egg scenario here. How do you buy a house before selling your house? So you can't, that's where that home sale contingency comes in. Now, as a seller, remember, you can always have used the suitable housing clause, which says in order for me to sell you my home, I must find a home. But make sure when accepting an offer after being clear about all this, that that is in the terms on the offers that you have till XYZ deadline in order to find your own housing. As you can tell, just kind of sorting your way through offers and all this paperwork and contingencies and all these big words, it's a lot of work. You should really work with a real estate agent that understands what they're doing. Over here at Movementum Realty, we call our agents Move Mentors because we look at them as more than just a salesperson. We look at them as both a mentor and a guide in the sales process, making sure you understand everything, whether it be buying, selling, or owning a home, so that way you can find success in real estate and not be one of those people that finds it to be highly stressful and to figure out what went wrong the whole time. Thank you so much for listening today. If you haven't already done so, make sure to pound that subscribe button, tell all your friends and family about the podcast, and I look forward to talking to you next week.